name is Lillian Olivia Orero. I am the founder of Safe Online Women Kenya, which is a community-based organization dealing with sensitizing young women and girls on online safety. I am 28 years old, and I am also a gender and tech lawyer and a Datasphere Initiative Fellow. So for me, when I think about data governance discussions, my focus mainly spans from my work, which is on online safety for young women and girls. So for me, I believe that for young women and girls to participate in such discussions, this will entail, number one, having digital literacy programs. There is no way we are going to be part of data governance discussions if we are not digitally literate. I would give the example of Kenya where we have a huge population of young people under the age of 25 years and that constitutes around 60% of our population. So you can imagine if we are going to have data governance discussions and these young people are not digitally literate, then we are going to have a big problem. Secondly, I would also like to build alliances and just not any alliances, but social media advocacy, youth groups, alliances. This would really help because in this time and age where we are a global village, we can connect with other youths from different parts of the world, borrow best practices from one another. For us to reach the centers of power and decision makers, I think that it's really important to establish safe spaces for young women and girls, safe online spaces where we do not feel vulnerable whenever we are interacting online, we do not feel like someone is harassing us and we feel that we have the support that we need in an online environment and specifically also talking about data governance discussions. As when I hear that term, I'm always itching to say something. So this is what I have for policymakers. First and foremost, having young people who have the lived experiences and know the specific challenges that they are facing in the online space is important. So there's no way we would have policymakers sitting at the top discussing policies that are affecting people for instance, at the grassroots level, without understanding their cultural context, their lived experiences. And so for me, the first thing is have young people have a seat at the table. And this will actually help in the policies that would come up because when young people contribute to the discussions, then they become rich because when the policies would be sent out the young people would be able to relate with them and as a result we would see impact from these policies and for me such policies would include stringent measures on like the online harassment that young people face having equal opportunities to participate in the digital space be it at the national level regional level and international platforms So this is an opportunity for me to talk about my initiative. So I am aware of an initiative called Safe Online Women Kenya, which is a community-based organization in Nairobi, Kenya, that actively leverages data by advancing sustainable development goal number five on gender equality. So what we do in my initiative is one, we collect and analyze data, for instance, concerning cyber violence and we try to see how this data for for instance relates to gender disparities and after we gather this information we try to advocate for policy changes that are accommodating to all gender and that tackle technology facilitated gender-based violence so for us leveraging the power of data is very important because 
we wouldn't have our numbers right, we would not know the impact of our projects and initiatives if we also do not use data. We can't run away from mental health in this age and time. So I'll give a personal example. Like last week, I was being trolled on Twitter because of an article that I had published. So the article was raising a lot of issues. However, people, instead of maybe critiquing my article, they came for my persona. And for me, when the online space has trolls, negative comments, to my person, I feel cyberbullied, I feel online harassed. And now some people went ahead to, you know, spread some misinformation or disinformation about what I do or the work that I do. And as a result, I was so stressed, I had to deactivate my accounts temporarily just to take in some time away from social media. And as a result, that's a way of silencing my voice because if I'm not on social media, then who is going to speak for the young women and girls who are also facing the same challenges like myself? So I had to like look for positive content that revolves around motivational quotes, growth, and just grounding myself in terms of how to navigate the online space so that it does not really get to my mind. To improve mental health online, my recommendation to schools, teachers and parents would be to collaborate and implement digital well-being programs. Growing up from a young age, I don't remember ever having a digital well-being program in my high school, in my university, and so this would be a very good opportunity to educate young people on media literacy and to create safe spaces and open discussions and that would start by having digital well-being programs in our curriculums. Final message would be an encouragement to young people. This is not the time to sit back, relax and let people decide for you. So if you want to see the change that we want, we have to be active participants in data governance discussions. So that is my final word.